Hey everyone. Today I am going to make another fish. This time it will be an all clear crappie, a common freshwater fish. In this demo, I'll show you my secret methods for shaping the fish body, creating the scales and sculpting the fins. The specific methods I've developed over the years have always set my fish apart from the others. In this video, I've taken the time to go into considerable detail. So the video is a little longer than usual, almost 30 minutes, but I think the information provided is worth it. The sculptural concepts and techniques illustrated by the process of making glass fish are applicable to many other subjects. For me, learning to shape glass fish back in the 80s in turn shaped me as an artist and formed the foundation for much of the work I did afterwards. So follow along. If my voiceover gets boring, mute it and turn on some music, but don't stop watching. This video is intended to be instructional, so play it as many times as you think you need to. Above all, please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already. Now let's get to it. The crappie has some unique identifying features. The sloping head with upward turned mouth, the heart-shaped caudal fin, the nearly symmetrical anal and dorsal fins with the gradually reducing spines. I have printed out some images to use as a visual reference while I work. The key to getting the body shape exactly right is the shape of the three profiles. The side profile, the top profile, which looks a little like the cross section of an airplane wing, and the front profile, which looks like an elongated egg. It is the combination of these three profiles that forms the fish body. I begin by attaching a handle to some 25 mm clear glass rod. I plan to gather up the glass into a shape that resembles the side profile of the fish. This way, the glass will be distributed the way it has to be for the fish body to maintain the correct shape while I form the other two profiles. I call this step the distribution. Now that I have the initial gather the correct shape, it is time to work on the top profile. Remember, I said it was roughly the shape of the cross section of an airplane wing. So I get a nice even heat in the gather and use my paddle to flatten it against my graphite plate. I use a rocking motion to try to emulate the top profile. I flip it over to keep the gather straight. It takes several heats to achieve what I want. I take care to get the entire shape flattened from the head to the tail. As you can see here, the resulting cross section is sort of a racetrack shape, but the front profile is an egg shape. That means I have to heat up the edges and paddle them down even further. I do this one corner at a time, heating it with a sweeping motion so the entire edge is heated evenly, and then paddling it again with a sweeping motion so the entire edge is affected evenly. I repeat this process for the other side of that edge of the body and then make final adjustments to make sure the shape is symmetrical from the front. This is the top of the fish. I 
I use the same technique to shape the bottom. The bottom is a little wider than the top, thus the elongated egg shape. Finally, I heat the entire side of the body and use a side-by-side -side rocking motion to smooth out any horizontal lines that remain from the paddling. This assures that the body has an entirely smooth form. Now I can adjust the head and tail to fine-tune the side profile to conform to my reference. I handle up to the tail and apply a deep heat to the front, drawing it out and pushing it down to create the downward slope of the head. Then I heat the caudal area and draw out the tail just a little bit. I heat the tip of the tail and paddle it so it will conform to the shape of the caudal area of the body. Now it is time to pose the fish. I apply a temporary handle to the tail, heat the entire body, and then bend it both laterally and vertically so the fish will look like it's swimming. Crappie eat insects from the surface of the water, so this one will appear to be rising upward. I remove the handle from the front and prepare to sculpt the head detail. The crappie has a dramatically upturned mouth and big eyes. I heat up the front of the body and use my paddle to shape the head to conform with the rest of the body. Then I heat the tip and paddle it back to create the upward slope of the upper jaw. I want the mouth to be open like in this example, so I will add the lower jaw as a separate piece of glass. I pre-shape the lower jaw by flattening a small gather at an angle so it is wedge-shaped. Then I add it to the head at the bottom of the flattened area, angling it upward to emulate my example. I have to immediately go into the mouth with my mini torch to smooth out the seal there so it won't crack later. A crack in this area later in the process would almost certainly be fatal. The area behind the lower jaw needs filling for the contours there to be correct. I use an 8mm rod to dab in some glass where needed and paddle it smooth. With the head now sculpted, I begin to add surface detail. First up are the lips. You heard me right, fish lips. I use the back side of my sculpting knife to press in this tiny detail. A quick crease on either side of the lower jaw completes the mouth. I 
I use my butter knife to create curved lines on either side of the head to indicate the gills. The butter knife I am using here is an old U.S. Navy knife I found at a flea market more than 40 years ago, and I've used it ever since. The eyes of the crappie are located right behind the mouth, just beneath the concave part of the head slope. I add dabs of glass in the appropriate location on either side of the head. Then I press them with my brass eye tool. The head is now complete, so I handle up to the lower jaw. This will now be the permanent project handle. The seal is relatively small, so it has to be a strong one. I remove the handle from the tail and clean it up. The main body of the fish is now complete and ready for detailing. Crappies have visible scales, so I plan to represent them using a technique I developed many years ago. First, I establish a deep heat base in the body to give me time to work on the surface for a while. Then, using a focused aggressive flame, I heat a diagonal band across the fish's body right behind the head. I quickly use my knife to create a shallow line there. I follow that with another one and another one leaving a pattern of evenly spaced shallow diagonal lines. Each heat has to be immediately followed by a quick stroke. I don't slide the knife over the surface. I use a rocking motion instead. The aggressive flame heats the surface quickly without penetrating too deeply into the body of the fish. Notice that I do not bring the knife to the fish. I bring the fish to the knife. The knife hovers in place, just above the flame, while I heat the next band of the fish. I continue this process all the way to the end of the tail. The creases get shorter and shorter, and so the process speeds up as I go. I take a minute to restore my heat base before continuing. Now I do the opposing angle. It is done the same way with the same quick shallow heats. These heats are enough to soften the glass to allow the knife to leave a mark, but not enough to melt the lines that are already there. The lines need to be evenly spaced. I accomplish this by placing the curved edge of the knife at the beginning of the line and rocking it downward. If I am off to one side or the other, I can quickly adjust by tipping the knife right or left until it is right where I need it to be. If I fail to carry a line all the way to the bottom of the body, I can quickly reheat that area and place my knife in the existing line before creasing it the rest of the way. It's important for this effect, for the crisscross pattern, to carry over the entire body. As you can see, this is an extremely effective technique for portraying scales. Now, I repeat this process for the other side of the fish. This technique takes some practice. You might be thinking, surely a specialized tool could be developed to make this much easier, and indeed I used to think so too. But the bodies of fish and their scales are highly varied, so it would be very difficult to create a single tool that could be used for all instances. I certainly never figured it out. But while I was trying to solve this problem, I continued to scale my fish this way, and then I noticed something. I noticed that this process simply did not take that long to do. Once I got the hang of it, I found I could scale a fish like this one entirely in about five minutes.
I complete the scaling pattern on the second side and add the lateral line. If I do this quickly enough, I can go right over the crisscross pattern without destroying it. The fish body is now complete and ready for fins. I do the anal fin first. It is fan-shaped and has a series of gradually descending spines at the front of it. My special technique for doing these fins is what I call striping. I begin with a single dab and pull at the back of the fin, and then I build forward by adding stripes of glass to the first pull. I have to let the first pull cool enough so it will not move when I stripe over it. I burn off the rod at the end of the pull so that I control the width of the fin at that point. With each subsequent wipe of glass, I begin to follow a line that will be the outside edge of the fin. I continue the fin by adding the short spines at the front, making each one a little shorter than the last. Yes, these are relatively cold seals. They have to be, but I can get away with it by doing what I do next. I use my mini torch to smooth the weld line where the fin meets the body. This eliminates any chance of cracking occurring there. Then I heat up the entire fin and use my tweezers to tug it into the proper shape. This also neutralizes the cold seals in the body of the fin. The next fin to add is the caudal or tail fin. It is fan shaped with a crease in the end like a valentine. I begin this fin with a draw right in the middle of the tail. I'll build off this draw in both directions, first the bottom and then the top. As with the anal fin, these wipes have to be relatively cold. I do flash into the structure briefly before each addition, but not enough for it to move when I add the glass. Each wipe is a bit shorter than the last, creating a short triangular shape. I repeat this process to form the bottom part of the fin. The idea is to get the glass in place, and then sculpt it into the proper shape. Once the fin is complete, I heat it up and flatten it on my marver plate. Now I use my mini torch to smooth the seal where the fin attaches to the tail. Then I heat the top half and tug it out using my tweezers. I repeat this for the bottom half to create the crease of the valentine shape. Now it is time for the dorsal fin. It is nearly identical to the anal fin, just ever so slightly larger. I have to be sure to maintain my heat base throughout this process.
Then, I heat the fin and tug it with my tweezers to get the proper shape. I pick along the edge of the fin to smooth it out. I flatten the fin on my torch marver, then I use my mini torch to smooth the seal between the fin and the body. Now I add the spines. I take the time to come back and pull the tip of each spine into a sharp point. I use a very small flame on my mini torch to smooth the seal between the spines and the body. The main fins and body are now complete. Only the gill and pectoral fins remain. The gill fins and pectoral fins have small attachments, so they will be made separately. I place the fish in the kiln to rest while I make them. The gill fins are first. I roll a small gather on the end of a 9mm rod and press it flat with my paddle. Then I use a sharp aggressive flame to heat one side of the fin and crease it with my sharp knife. I add more creases, angling them to make a fan pattern. These are the rays of the fin. Then I punty up to the end with a 3mm rod and stretch the fin to get a more triangular shape. I burn off the 9mm rod leaving enough to make a small ball that I will use to seal the fin to the fish. I make a second fin, identical to the first. I retrieve the fish from the kiln and using a small aggressive flame, seal the fin to the body just behind the gill. I position the fin at an angle to the body. I tug slightly as the seal cools, drawing the surface on the outside of the fin smooth. I remove the punty and immediately use my mini torch to smooth the seal between the fin and the body. I hold the fish so that the fin hangs down. This way it won't move while I do this. No need to bridge. I repeat this process for the other gill fin. Now I make the pectoral fins. These fins are triangular in shape, so they are made a little differently than the gill fins.
I draw the flattened gather out to a point, and then I use my shears to cut the end off diagonally. I heat and tug on the corners of the resulting shape to get the triangle that I want. Then I make my creases as before to simulate the rays of the fin. I punty up to the pointed end and remove the 9mm rod, leaving enough material for the seal. Then I make a second fin and compare it to the first to make sure they match. I retrieve the fish from the kiln and weld the fins to the bottom just below the gill fins. I use my mini torch to smooth the inside of each seal. If I have made the seal correctly, I should not have to smooth the outside of the seal, so no bridging is required. The fish is complete. I just have to make a display base for it. I roll up a pretty sizable gather of 25mm glass. I heat the bottom of the gather and press it against the side of my torch marber to flatten the bottom. I'm looking for a kind of a Hershey's Kiss type of shape. If I simply flatten the bottom, it will not sit securely. So I use a dome-shaped graphite block I made many years ago and press the bottom against it to create a concave bottom. I let the bottom cool a little bit, and then I set it on the graphite plate to flatten the rim of the concave. Now the base will sit securely with no cold work needed. I let the base cool until it no longer glows from the heat, and then I secure it in my Herbert Arnold grippers and proceed to heat the neck. I draw it out into a curved gooseneck shape. I burn off the handle and the base is complete. I can add it either hot or cold, it does not matter. I retrieve the fish from the kiln one last time and pose it with the base to see how I will attach it. I heat a spot on the belly between the pectoral fins and the anal fin and seal the base on there. I hold the fish in the pose that I want and wait for it to stop moving. Then I remove the handle from the lower jaw and paddle it. I cannot bridge here, so I rest the fish upside down on the marble board while I polish the seal. And here is the final result.
Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little something from it. I share these techniques with you and ask nothing in return, except that you like this video and subscribe to my channel if you've not already done so. Please leave a comment below and come back here often. I need to get my views up, so check out a few of my previous videos while you're here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.